Journal team on KPFT, Houston's community station. Hey everybody, this is Hayes Carl, and you're listening to KPFT Houston. Listeners should be aware that the following program contains language and audio images which may be found disturbing and may not be suitable for your snotty-nosed little brat who probably cusses like a sailor behind your back anyway. Parental discretion is advised. Time to holler down the pipe chase and rattle them bars because we're going to do a prison show for you right here at beautiful old historic old exciting new KPFT Houston from the heart of Montrose where we all hope tomorrow will be a better day. Welcome to the Prison Show. Tonight is Friday, May the 17th. Am I on the air, David? Yep, Uh, you're on the air. Oh, it doesn't. Maybe it's my... It didn't sound like it. Maybe it's your headphones. Maybe it's my headphones, yeah. Are you in the same headphones I just cranked up that volume on, or did you grab a different pair? I didn't grab... No, I'm on... Well... I'm not on that. Bottom right hand knob is your volume knob. Adjust your volume, please. (laughs) You know what? I know. It's been one of those days. It's been one of those weeks. So. Weeks. Storm. I hope everyone's doing okay from the storm. So I I came in after you did. As I came south on 59, on the left-hand side, it was lightning and storming and had a rainbow. And on the right-hand side, the sun was going down. It was... (laughs) Blue and pink and beautiful. I mean, it was just. Yeah, I came straight down 45 from the woodlands, and man, there was some um, one of the, those big billboard signs were toppled over. There were several of them toppled over, and uh, of course the big towers that you um, see those were crumpled up in a big mass, twisted on the side. Whew. Yeah, it's a, it's been a long, long few weeks, people being flooded. And now, of course, we're here on Friday the 17th doing Fun Drive. Woohoo! Woohoo! That's it? Just woohoo? <laughs> <laughs> Just woohoo? Everybody knows I, yeah. I do you, not you like can, this part. Well, I mean, you know, we're working to where we don't have to do this. Absolutely. Uh, we we kind of gave that up last week. If everybody would be a sustainer, I don't care if you got 25 bucks a month. I mean, that's $300 a year. And if everybody who listened, man, we could pay all the bills for KPFT. Yeah, we could. So. And we, I know I would love it. Because I wouldn't have to ask for money. Yeah. But. People think we're begging, but we just got to pay the bills. I mean, it's. It's just basic math, arithmetic. But what you can do is call 713-526-5738, option number one to donate. 
option number one to donate. And then later on in the show at 945, you can call 713-526-5738. Hit option number two to go speak to your loved one on the air during the shout out portion of our show. But of course, option number one to donate. And how many people donated last week? Do you remember? Do we have a list? Uh, I would really like to say thank you to everybody who did donate. I know we're taking up time, and I think we got two minutes left, believe it or not. Yeah, I think we do. <laughs> I was scrolling as fast as I could because I know I want to say thank you to Don, and I want to say thank you to Elizabeth, and I wanted to say thank you to Steve right off the top of my head. And then we got had what Gloria and Stephanie and Michael and Rosalva and Brandy. Yes. That's a pretty good list. Pretty good list, yes. Thank you so much, and I really hope that maybe we have a list like that tonight. Absolutely. <laughs> we, we do, too. Oh, and Helen and Eugene. Helen and Eugene. Yes, so. Eugene. Yay. So uh, Eugene is one of our uh, incarcerated people, and he cut that off of his books, and we appreciate that very much. Very much. And, uh, I mean, it... I'm going to have to reiterate, it doesn't matter how much you got. If you got five bucks and you can bless us with that, then we appreciate that. If you got a hundred bucks, I mean, it just, everybody's different. We all come from different walks of life. And everybody who hears my voice, this is listener sponsored radio. So that means it's your duty to step up. Because if not, if we ever get taken over by Big Brother, then we're not going to be able to have certain shows on because they're going to demand that we do certain things their way. And this, the way, listener sponsored radio is is we put on the show that you want to hear it's community media so please call 713-526-5738 or you can be like me i should have been a millennial go to www.kpft.org and use the drop down menu either which way you go make sure you donate to the prison show or the prison show ever how you pronounce that word whatever you like whatever you like <laughs> All right, now we have a great show. David lined up a great show. But first, right out the gate is Mary Sue Molnar. She is executive director at Texas Voices for Reason and Justice. How are you, Miss Mary? Hey, lady, I am doing fine. I heard about all the rain you guys got there. Ooh, not only rain, it was wind, it was tornadoes it, it it's it's been a light show for sure there's a tree down in the and, parking lot right now yeah <laughs> and and now you guys are going to get a break i think for a little while uh, i i really I, hope so i hope so it's it, raining uh, and lightning right now yeah oh no so good evening and uh my name is mary sue Bonar. i'm the executive director of texas voices we are an organization that works on common sense laws and policies for people who are on the sex offense registry, which could be anybody and everybody. Um, so we don't work on a lot of in-prison matters, mostly when you get out. We, we work on um, some of the ridiculous restrictions and conditions, residency restrictions, we're trying to focus on getting, um, giving people an opportunity to get off the registry at some point. Uh, we don't even feel like the registry works at all. It doesn't protect anyone. But we work, we're working step by step and seeing what we can get done. So there's a Sunset Commission uh, coming up, and they're going to be looking at different organizations, and one of them is going to be TDCJ, and a part of that is the Parole Division. So we're focusing on I, – I don't remember. Have I ever talked about the bus stop issue? Uh, I don't remember if you did. I, I don't think I have. It's, it's a really strange policy. They claim that it has been on the books forever. I claim that that's bullshit because I never started getting a call or email about it until about three years ago. All of a sudden, I was getting letters from uh, people on the inside, calls from family members, emails, texts, and they were saying that their loved one had been 
their home plan had been denied because they lived too close to a bus stop, a school bus stop. So what we found is that they're considering a school bus stop to be any place where a school bus stops to pick up or drop off kids. So I know on my block, the school bus stops across the street and picks up three kids that live there. They would consider that a bus stop, a child safety zone. So they started denying. And I spoke with uh, Mr. Hinojosa about it. I had a face-to-face meeting. This was a good three years ago. And he said, um, oh, it's always been a condition. I said, no, it's not. Because my son was able to move here, and there's a bus that stops across the street. And if you're going to count everywhere that a bus stops to pick up or drop off kids, there's nowhere else to go. Buses go everywhere. They stop everywhere, even out in the country. Yes. So we went round and round, and it was like talking to a politician. So we've been working on that quite a bit. Um, There was a man in – there is a man in Houston who has two really good uh, privately run halfway homes. The guys are really happy there. There's eight of them to – eight or nine to a home, and it's really big homes. And they're working, and they're paying their bills, and they really like it there. They're doing really well. And I got a call last month from two of the guys. Parole had called them and said, you're going to have to move. There's a school that's putting up a bus stop within 500 feet, so you're going to have to move. And they gave them 14 days to get out. How are they supposed to find some place within 14 days? Well, I couldn't believe them. So I called the man that owns the home, and he said, yeah. He said, I've been, I've had this home for years, you know, and all of a sudden they're saying there's going to be a bus picking up kids down the, you know, down the road. And I'm like, well, wow, this is not, this is not what parole is supposed to do. They're supposed to try to help people reenter. So it's just a mess. So, uh, yeah, they, they, some of them found a place to live and the ones who didn't, uh, TDCJ went and picked them up and took them to one of their horrific halfway houses. Uh, so we've been working on this bus stop issue. And what I've been doing is the people that have been calling me and saying, oh, my God, you know, my my house got turned down because of a bus stop. I'm telling them, write your legislator. Write the Sunset Committee. You, online, there's a forum online, and you can complain or whatever you want about any agency that you want. So I told, I'm telling them I'm sending them there. We'll put in your complaint. Get ready to go up and testify. I mean, this is just ridiculous. It, it if is they ridiculous. wanted to, you know, we know that the majority of, of people on the registry or on parole for a sex offense are not going to reoffend. It's almost always someone, all, all new, almost all new sex offenses are committed by someone who's not on the registry. But let's say that someone on parole wanted to um, grab a kid. They can drive to the damn bus stop. They don't have to. It doesn't. It's not going to be a bus stop close to where they live, where they could be recognized. They could drive to anywhere they want. You know, for that matter, they could drive to a Walmart if they want to find a kid. I mean, it's just a ridiculous concept. But what it's doing is stripping people of their home. A lot of people have family that they could, you know, go home to, but they're turning. So many people down. I, I probably got six calls last week or this week from people, you know, that got turned down because of the bus stop. Like, this is crazy. And bus stops, so, like you had mentioned, I mean, I know around where I live, bus stop, and even where I lived, you know, a year ago, bus stops change all the time. Like you They change. They, they change every school year and sometimes they change in the middle of the year so how can you ever be secure in your home life you know in your home how can you ever put roots down and see one of the big problems is for family members they're trying to determine if their house will be approved or not so it's like well you have to call the school's bus, you know, bus garage 
and see if you can get a list of all the places at the bus stops. But even if you do that, that bus may be in a different location by the time your loved one gets out. So families are just robbed of the opportunity to plan for their loved one to come home. It is just ridiculous. I can't tell you how burned up I am about this. So we're, you know, we're trying to bring awareness, but it's really difficult. It's really difficult to get someone to care, you know. It, it really gotta, is very difficult. Keep speaking out. Yeah, we got to keep speaking out and speaking out loud. You know, if you want people to succeed, if you want them to reenter successfully, get rid of the damn bus stop thing. It, it's ridiculous. It doesn't work anyway. It doesn't prevent anything. No, it doesn't. And except, except it prevents people from from living, you know, somewhere. Well, yeah, and most of the time, uh, children aren't really out that long at the bus stop anyway. No, I mean seriously, you know, they they they're they're not, it's not like, and there may be some areas where they're you know there certain areas like it, it's a very front of a subdivision maybe you know the parents you know there's 10 or 12 kids there normally there's one parent in the car who sits there and watches until the bus comes right but it's you know like i said if somebody is to uh you know go by a bus stop and snatch a kid or whatever which is very rare but if somebody were to do that it would most likely not be somebody on parole or it wouldn't be somebody on the registry. It's somebody who's not registered. So, you know, they they think that they can create a law or a policy or a restriction that's going to protect kids, and that's not what they're doing. You know, it's just not what they're doing. So you're so, planning um, on uh, getting out there for this next uh, legislative uh, session coming up in January? Yeah. Yeah, but also that the Sunset Commission, I, I'm not sure when they're going to meet. They're still taking comments, so uh, we're still sending in comments. If, if we send in enough, maybe we can get them to look at it. I'm planning to be there. Um, oh, it's just like, gosh, this is just – it's just frustrating. It's not like there's a lot of places where they can live anyway. And then to take all of that, all of those areas. And what's really crazy is it's 500 feet, and it's as the crow flies. So the bus might stop on the block behind you. And if that's 500 feet, which it would be, then you're going to get turned down. So it's not like, you know, oh, get this. I had one lady call. This was, I guess, about a year ago, and she said, I, I'm hoping you can help me. My my house got turned down for my husband to come home because there's a bus that stops and picks up two kids. And I said, oh, yeah, and I you know, started explaining to her, I understand, we've heard about this before. And she said, well, the problem is those two kids are mine and my husband. <laughs> And he's allowed, he's been given permission, they weren't the victims, and he's been giving, given permission to come back home and live with us. So they're not being turned down because of his kids, they're being turned down because of a bus stops. <laughs> well, I'm like, okay. Well, Mary, we, we've got to um, wrap it up, but we appreciate you giving us the information Stuff that we can definitely uh, write into. I've written into the Sunset Commission several times, but I'm going to do it again. Yeah, now. think about the bus stop. Well, let me give you my address for letters. Okay. It's Texas Voices, P.O. Box 23539, San Antonio, Texas 78223. That's P.O. Box 23539. San Antonio, Texas, 78223. Thank you, Mary, and you have a great weekend. You guys do the same, and I hope everything dries up and clears up for you. (laughs) Thank you. You're welcome. We'll talk to you all soon. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, you know what time it is. Pitch, pitch, pitch. David, David, David. (laughs) 
David, David, David. Yeah. I want to thank Abe for your generous donation. We really appreciate that. And that's what this show's all about. I mean, right. it's listener-sponsored radio. Make your pledge in any amount. Abe had a generous pledge. I know there's another generous pledge out there. And you know what's really neat is those bricks out front. We've got all those bricks. I got a brick. Uh, I don't know. You guys got two or three bricks. I mean, I just was amazed at how many people, well, every time we talk about these bricks, there's one way that you can always remember your donation, and it really means a lot. If you have a loved one that's incarcerated and you want to memorialize that, or if you've had someone, Danny, you you lost someone. I did. And that way, they're out there. We've got a, bricks with Ray's name, bricks with Dewey's name, uh, Death Row Angels' names, uh, the prison shows out there. Right. I mean, it, and all it takes is to be a sustainer at $25 a month. So we were talking earlier, $25, you think it's a lot of money. It's even more whenever you add it up times 12. We get a $300 donation if you can do a $25 donation. $25 a month as a sustainer, and you can get a brick. If you could do $50, I'm pushing it a little bit here, but if you could do $50, what's that, a 4 by 4 brick? No. 4 that, by 8 right? 4 by 8 A 4 so, by 4 is $25. 4 by 8 is $50 a month, which equals to $600 a year. Yep. So that's even better. I mean, it looks better whenever we get the larger donation because, you know, that's how they judge our shows. Ever how much money we bring in. If we're not bringing any money, then they're either going to cut us or put us at a, at a later spot or whatever because that's how they judge how many people are listening to us besides just the ratings. That gives us the freedom to have our show as we like our show, the same show we've had for 44 years. So call 713-526-5738, option number one, or go to www.kpft.org. Hit the drop-down menu. Remember, it's The Prison Show. It's under the T's. It's not under the P's. Make sure that we get credit for that, please. Thank you so much. And in memory of Tom, because Tom's not here oh. tonight. Or you can text the word GIVE to 713-526-5738. That way you don't have to go online. You don't have to talk to anyone. Just text it. That's, you know, that's what it does. Whenever you text the word GIVE, it gives you the URL and you end up online. Really? <laughs> yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be nice if you text the word GIVE and they ask you how much, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. No, and it like, gives you the URL, and you end up on the at the donation. It's like hitting the donation button when you go to. That up. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting here going, "Woo!" Yeah, yeah. Tom likes that, but I'm sitting here thinking, "Well, we just really did that. That's just a quick way to get to the link." <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's now, all right. The Encourager. Danny Sneed, the Encourager, the prison show's veteran reporter, is here. How you guys doing? Thank you guys for creating a platform for formerly incarcerated returning citizens. I like that label, returning citizens. I do too. Yeah. It humanizes my experience instead of saying a convicted felon, <laughs> jailbird, you know. So uh, we like that term, returning citizen. Also, I want to uh, uh, tell you guys that if you're a veteran and you're incarcerated and you're looking to parole soon, within a year, within a couple of years, within three, four, five years. And you're going to be returning back to, to Houston, Galveston, Huntsville, any of these regions. If you're a veteran, the first thing I want you to do when you get out is go to your local VA, especially if you're in Houston. And when you go to the VA, I'm, I need you to, um, if you have any medications that you're taking, um, that you were taking while you locked up, I need you to bring them with you to the VA. Uh, and you want to do this within 30 days once you, you touch down. Uh, you want to bring your ID and a copy of your DD-214. You want to ask the VA staff where to sign up for VA health care. So you got a list of your medications taken while you're incarcerated, incarcerated and you want to ask for an appointment. With that appointment they're going to set for you, they're going to set you up with a primary care physician. Why is this important? Because health care is important. It, it is. I, I, one of my affirmations is my wealth is my health. And the reason I say that is what good is it to have a lot of money and your health bad? 
what I, I always refer to Steve Jobs. You know who Steve Jobs yeah, was? Yeah. And, and, and when Steve Jobs was uh, battling cancer and he, and he was in a later stage and they would interview him, and you, you know he said that out of all the things, that, all that money and all that wealth meant nothing at the end of his journey. He saw something, what the value of life was. But he, but we don't want to learn like that. We don't want to learn no. that lesson like that. We want to learn while we still have our help. So, so now that you're out, you've been out, you, 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 and you're a veteran. And say to them that you served uh, before 1980. So if you join the military before 1980, you're going to need a honorable or general discharge to receive full medical benefits. I'm going to say it again. Those who served before September the 7th, 1980, need an honorable, general, or medical discharge to receive medical attention. Veterans who are listed after September 7, 1980, must have served 24 continuous months in addition to have an honorable discharge. That would be me. I joined in 1982. So the criteria for me would be I would have to have served two years and I have to have done that honorably or general, generally or receive the medical discharge, meaning I got hurt while I was in and, you know, you got out of medical conditions. So, and if you were in the National Guard or the Reserves, you must have been called up for active duty to be eligible for health care um, to get full benefits. Now, here's something that you can get if you don't meet those criteria, but you serve, you are able to, if not get medical care, everybody get housing. Say if you got out on a disabled discharge and you didn't serve but a year. Well, they changed where they open it up, what they call something called humanitarian. You go in, you don't meet the qualifications, but what this country said is no veteran, regardless of his status, will be homeless. So here in Houston, we have a health care for homeless veterans program, it mean housing first program. Housing first meaning when you get out, you don't have someone to parole to. You don't have to have a job. You don't have to have a, 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 anything but something to show that you served in the military. And what this program does is it provides you with a voucher. And that with that voucher, it allows you to take it to um, – Landlords or apartment complexes that are on that program that are sub vouchers. Really, it's like being on Section 8, but what it does is it separates veterans from everybody else. And see, for veterans, you have your own program to streamline you to get in housing. So, Danny, Dan, like for you, if you went and tried to get housing and you were eligible, the list you would be on would be a waiting list with, with people waiting to get housing. It may take you three months, six months, it may take you a year. A single male that's not a veteran, if he goes apply for housing, it may him take him one or two years to get housing. But a veteran, he's get, he gets out, he goes apply for housing, they're going to house him immediately until he can get permanent housing. So they have places like the Salvation Army where they have a spaces, beds, a lot of just for veterans. And you can stay there until you get your voucher. So you can stay up there five, six, seven months, as long as it process it takes for you to get a voucher, take it to a landlord, have the apartment inspected, and once it's inspected, you move in. You got a key. Now, there's responsibility to come with an apartment. Unless you get one, all bills paid, you still need to eat, right? You still need to wash your clothes. So realistically, there's, you still need to generate some type of income. Now, for those of you who are service-connected, I'm probably running out of time. If you were service-connected before you got incarcerated, and when you got incarcerated and they cut it off, once you get back out, you go, you have you get your benefits started again, whether you was 10%, 20%, 30%, whatever your percentage was. Last thing, if you have no percentage, I encourage you, 
to get out and file for at least your hearing loss. It's called tinnitus. Tinnitus. And what it is, this is a buzzing ringing in your ears. You can still hear, but you still hear like mm-hmm. bumblebees or humming or ringing sound. So once you apply for that and you get approved, they'll at least give you 10%. And 10% is about $171.36 a month. And the reason I got it down to the cents, I get it. <laughs> I'm 10% service connected. And I waited. I had been out of the military. I got out in 88. I only went to apply for my benefits two years ago. Because someone like me that was giving the information telling me, you need to go down there and get. And I listened. The amount of time, guys, um, I'm the veteran reporter. I'm the guy that has the lived experience, spent 15 years in TDC, went three different times, got out. And what changed? My thinking changed, and I stayed clean. I never went back to active using. My clean date is the date I got out. So what address can they write you at? Well, let's go with 4500 Travis Street, Houston, Texas, 77002. That's Danny Sneed, S-N-E-E-D, a.k.a. the Encourage, a.k.a. the Veteran Reporter. Uh, God turned my wounds into wisdom, and my smile is my style. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Encourager. <laughs> we love you and can't wait to see you back here soon, very, very soon. All right, David. Thank you, Brandy. We thank you so much for another generous gift. Well, thank you, Brandy. Thank you, Danny, for coming on the show. We appreciate you. I know it was a rush to get over here after work, and we appreciate you rushing right over. Um, the weather's not so good to be rushing, but, but you did a great job. Thank you so much. So we'll get back to pitching, pitch, 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 pitch. I mean, we've got a couple of pledges tonight, but we have to have a lot more than that. And even though we really appreciate the ones that we have, we're going to really appreciate the more that we get. So please call 713-526-5738, option number one to donate. And here in about another 15 minutes or so, you can do option number two to get in line, to get in the queue to make your shout outs. So don't remember, don't forget to make your shout outs tonight. But I, I'm just, I'm in the process of making my pledge. I'm doing a one-time pledge because Dee Dee and I are already sustainers, but I'm going to go ahead and I will usually make another pledge. But uh, I use the kpft.org because that way I don't have to deal with a pe- person, and it is secure. You don't have to worry about anybody getting your information. You go online. It's secure. It's safe. I've never heard of anybody getting their information stolen from KPFT. Well, don't jinx it. <laughs> <laughs> and now you did it. It's like the bank. They've got that encrypted stuff. So. <laughs> People can't understand the language anyway. It's like you're behind a firewall. So it's perfectly safe. So you guys choose ever how you want to do it, but do it, please. Or Go text the it. word give <laughs> and get that URL sent directly <laughs> to your phone. Get the Earl sent. <laughs> the Earl. The Earl. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to head on over to Paul Morgan on line one. Hi, Paul. Hey, can you all hear me? We can. Hey, how are y'all doing today? Uh, living the dream. Living the dream. Oh, it, 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 this is quite a dream. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like it's a post-apocalyptic, a post-apocalyptic dream. Um, do you have do, do you have power where you're at? Uh, we do. I was out for a little while, but I live right by a hospital, so it's kind of like we don't stay out for very long. And wait. Let me knock on wood again. <laughs> you know, so well, what, I, what I've heard is that your side of town is going to be fine. And I don't know if this is true, but apparently your power grid is um, is is uh, under the ground. Yes. Yes, it is. So, and so for, for us plebeians, we have our power grid above the ground because we're not as important as all the, you know, medical professionals. So. <laughs> right, right. 
<laughs> yeah. But so, uh, so what you got for us tonight? Well, at first, if you hear um, a loud noise in the background, that is our that that is the generator we just hooked up, and um, me and my wife are trying to figure out how to make the house run on a generator, and it's uh, it's a sight to behold. There's cords everywhere. There's uh, you don't have it inside the house, do you? No, we're we're, we're you know we 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 have. A little snap to us, but not that much. <laughs> someone did. Someone, someone had to had to slowly tell us though to make sure that the engine, ex, uh, you know, sticks outside and that the exhaust doesn't come in the house. Oh, right. but, man, this thing is loud. This thing is so loud. Um, but uh, but yeah, um, we're supposed to be without power for. Oh my God! The, the Judge Hill Doggo actually said it could, it could be like several weeks. I can't imagine doing this for more than a couple of days. Um, I really hope that we don't have that we have power in less than a week. I mean, didn't we learn our lesson with the freeze? Like, didn't ERCOT get, get in all sorts of trouble because when the freeze happened, we, yes. we didn't have like utilities. So, yes. yes, they did, yeah. but hopefully it won't be that long. But I don't know. I saw some of the um, power, those big metal power tower things and they were like curled up on the side of the road yeah i i I saw pictures of them too and there's trees everywhere there's debris oh man i just i can't believe i can't believe this happening um david how's the weather like where you're staying well it's really bad. Um, we've been going through it for about three weeks, and then last night, whenever you guys had it for about an hour or something, and I'm, I'm not saying you didn't get a lot of it, but ours started at like five o'clock, and didn't get over to almost eight o'clock. So I oh. mean, it, it was yeah. I mean, we had like a big giant storm, and you guys had one quick fast whoop, and that ripped apart everything. So I mean, I mean, it was terrible. It was just a whole lot but more of, up here. Our our house was rocking. We couldn't see nothing. The rain was going sideways. I live up on a hill, but yet all the water looked like a river. And I mean, and oh, it, yeah. it it cut a groove across my road. So now whenever I go out my road, I I got a big bump that I got to go through. So I was thinking <laughs> I'm going to put a concrete culvert or whatever they call that in, so that way that the creek goes under the road instead of across the road. Nice. Nice. Yeah, well, you say nice, but how much money is all that cost? <laughs> oh, I know. And then the trees down, KPFT has a tree down back here. And I don't know how oh, many houses really? I've seen. The weather guy from Channel 13, I just saw him on Facebook, and he's got a, a, his two trees down, one of them on his house. So, yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, I've been seeing the trees on, on Instagram. Like, every the, there's trees, like, destroying halfway they'd like just like cutting cars in half and destroying uh, houses and doing all sorts of off stuff yeah and, i had a one of those little bitty crank generators and i had was running our refrigerators from the little crank generators i don't know i can't afford the big generator but. no it did yeah this is our, our first foray into generators and um our neighbor next door has like the ultra quiet one yeah that, that must be nice Ours oh, is yeah. loud, and then you hear it whenever it needs gas, or I mean, it's just <laughs> it starts yeah. chugging along, and it's like, oh, I gotta go. And then the mosquitoes yeah. are so bad; as soon as you step outside to go get the gas, they just thousands of them attack you all at the same time. Right, I know the mosquitoes are a little more intense this this season, right? You know, it's, we've had so much rain; they're wow. a lot it's more good. intense. Yeah. But you know what? We need it. That uh, last summer was brutal. Oh my God! It was like a hundred degrees, like for like like a week and a half straight. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm glad to hear that everyone's safe and sound. Um, so, so how did that affect the courts? So courts were closed today, um, and because uh, Harris County, the court system follows follows the leads of H I H I S D. So much HISD says, we're done, we're closed. Then all the courts typically follow suit. So I imagine Monday is going to be kind of crazy, assuming assuming we have power. Um, I don't know how sympathetic the judges will be 
um, to individuals not having power and then get into court. Um, I guess if the school thinks it's sympathetic, um, then the courts will think it's sympathetic. But uh, that's currently the only pattern everyone's in. Um, I imagine the debris should be uh, should be cleared up. But I think the big reason the courts closed down today was that um, a downtown was like a war zone, you know, yeah. like the well, Wells Fargo building. Yeah, I saw um, that. How many? I mean, yeah, hundreds of windows, just the glass is all gone. Oh, it, it looked like snow on the side of the road. It was crazy. Yeah, I um, seen them out there sweeping up all the glass. Yeah, the, the glass, trees, it was, it, it was nuts. Um, what about all those... I mean, I know it wasn't downtown and didn't have nothing to do with the courts, but did you see all those apartment complexes like in Spring Branch? The whole roofs are grown. You can see no, right I down on top that. of their apartments. It, 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 is everyone okay over there? Well, I think in the whole city, out of all the chaos that we have, I think we've we've all. I, I don't want to diminish it, but there's been seven deaths, and I'm not sure how many people have been injured. But tonight, I heard there was a, they found a seventh person who had passed away that, that I, I did see that i heard that the the death toll is now seven and uh um i was wondering i was wondering where and what the uh, the cause of death was for uh, for those seven and the the one that was reported was real sad it was like a it was like a woman that was moving her car or something like that and that's just horrible you know that's because the it's like what you said you know that the the storm just kind of came out of nowhere and it was like fast and furious. So, if you're kind of caught off guard, uh, I imagine that it would be hard to deal with. But my sneaking suspicion is probably that it was the um, there were probably a couple of deaths were homeless people that couldn't find shelter uh, quick enough from the storm, which yeah. would be very sad. But um, but yeah. Um, well, I'm glad that we all can come out of it. Most of us have come out of it alive. That could have been a really a lot worse. Yeah, I'm, I'm also surprised to hear that like this didn't really have any serious impact on the jail, and I haven't heard it impacting any TDC units yet. Right. That the the the, the 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 storm is is going all the way from Harris County to Louisiana, right? It actually went to all the way to Cape Canaveral, Florida. They they yeah. had a name oh. for it. It was called Derecho or Derecho. something like that. Yeah, it was a it was a tornado, right? But it the, but it but it, it has to go longer than than so many miles, and it actually went from Austin, Texas, all the way to Cape Canaveral, Florida. Wow. Yeah. So I mean, it's just like I don't know a once in a lifetime storm. It I've never heard of anything like that. And whenever the I, newscaster I, called it by name, I'm like, what they got named for everything? <laughs> <laughs> It, 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 I mean, derecho means right in Spanish. Right. right. Well, kind of like it's, it. it's, it's a la derecha, but yeah. Oh, but, yeah. Well, well, it shows how much Spanish I know. Um, it's close. Yeah, you're right. But, I mean, I was trying to figure out why they would call it that, too. I don't know if it's because of the way it was the twisting motion that it makes or what, but, but they actually had a name for it. But they said that it has to go... So many miles before it gets that that name, and this thing went all the way from Austin, Texas, to Cape Canaveral, Florida. So that's insane. Yeah, um, I heard. I heard we're actually supposed to get more more rain and more of this storm this weekend. Has anyone else heard that? No, I thought it was supposed to clear up today for the weekend anyway, yeah. until sometime next week. No, I, I I heard we're supposed to get more rain tonight. Well, that's tonight. That's they said Friday. So. And I got a I got a wedding tomorrow, so don't don't jinx it. <laughs> you want me to knock on wood again? Yeah, I got to go to all the way to Washington, Texas. So anybody out in Washington, Texas, tell me how the weather is, so I can know. I, I want to ride my Harley. Wait, 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 Washington County? Yeah. Or is that uh, Yeah, that's, I've been there before. Is that the? Uh, it's in between here and uh. Yeah, it's like you go to Austin, go out two ninety, and, and yeah, that's right. Then end up going north. So it's yeah. a it's only a two hour ride from my house. So of course I live that's so far bad. north. It's I'll I'll cut over through Cold Springs and I don't know Willis and all that stuff. 
I like, like to go through the easy. country. It's actually shorter to go that route. They want, if I come all the way down and take 99 all the way out to 290, it's, uh, I don't know, it's at least 25 miles longer than it is if I go straight out. Well, it's, it's, you're at a good period of time right now where it's, it's, it'd be fun to run around on the bike because it's, it's like that, the couple of weeks where it's not scorching hot in Texas, but it's also not so cold where it's uncomfortable. So if, if, it, if we didn't have this crazy weather, it'd be nice to ride around. Yeah, that's just a matter of being able to get through the water. Now. Even if you think you can get through the water, the, the road falls through. I don't know how many different bridges I've seen where the, actually the road just fell through. And I've seen them over here off of 59 earlier tonight trying to pull a truck out. Uh, the car made it through, but the truck, whenever he went through, he fell in the hole. So, well, yeah, if, if if there's water there, man, turn around, don't drown. <laughs> yeah, turn turn around, don't drown. Yep. Turn around, don't drown. Oh, what a what a catchy little jingle. Yeah, uh, but it's true. Uh, Dee Dee made it home the other night. She said that she knew better than to drive through the water, but she kept on going because she could see how high the water was compared to the trees. But then she got a couple of places where the trees actually fell down, and her and some other lady had to get out and move the trees. Yeah, I did. I I, I did the opposite. I, I saw a uh, I saw a little thing of water, and I and I drove right through it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I also have a you know I have an F one Raptor, you know. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. I, 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 I don't ever get to play with it. So. And green the whole way. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, well, I'm afraid we're gonna have to go, and uh, it, we're actually Danny's saying that we have to go, but we're, yep, we went through our pitch and time and everything, so. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so that's that's a hint for Paul to to not not just pitch, but Paul needs to call seven one three five two six five seven three eight option number one. <laughs> Pressure. So, yeah. well, it, 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 you know what? The, the, the pledge is a good thing, so I, I'll be pledging tonight. Thank um, you, Paul. We really appreciate yep. you calling in. We, we appreciate all you do, and uh, hope hopefully your electrician and everything will come back up pretty soon. Right back at you. And uh, and for those of you out there that have not pledged yet, make sure to uh, dial in and pledge. And for those of y'all that missed it, this is Paul Morgan. This is our, our local attorney here that comes on quite often. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Y'all have a good night now. You too. You don't have a quick pitch you want to do? No, we're going to get to <laughs> Hey, you right. you gabbed enough. Well, that was I like talking to Paul. Paul, and besides that, that's current events. That's the things that the guys only read about or see on TV, and then here we are. We got to talk about it. <laughs> okay, David. <laughs> all right, now we have Abe. Hey, Abe, how you doing? Hey, I'm Bob. I'm doing all right. I'm glad to be with you all, and 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 I'll do the pitch, everybody. I started off when I started listening at nine o'clock. Uh, uh, going to kpfkey.org took me less than two minutes to make my pledge and I encourage everybody especially if you're listening because I'm on tonight or because you oppose the death penalty then tonight's the night to chip into the prison radio show um, join me in doing so. Uh, so so with that I also want to note while you're all talking I looked up the rate show According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association, a derecho is a Spanish word meaning direct or straight ahead. And it's coined to distinguish the straight line wind damage from that produced by tornadoes. But in particular, a derecho is a widespread, long lived straight line wind storm that's associated with a fast moving group of severe thunderstorms known as a mesoscale convective system and it can cause hurricane force winds, heavy rains and flash floods. I have actually lived in places where I've experienced that twice in Chevrolet, Maryland and then here in Bexley, Ohio. Uh, and, and, and I'm sorry for everybody that's had to deal with that just uh, in the last couple of days. So with the weather report being done, um, we've got a pretty nasty weather report in terms of what's coming up with the death penalty in this country and in other countries. And, but first, I want to share some good news. Um, since I last was on, I think it was three weeks ago now, because we had to jump a week due to whatever the last thing was. Um, 
We had an execution scheduled in Oklahoma in June. That is now off the table. Wade Lay has been moved to a psychiatric prison because they, he was you know, there was really no contesting the fact of his uh, inability to understand what it meant to be executed. So, so he's off the table. Of course, the state of Oklahoma is going to continue to seek um, to seek uh, uh, to have him checked and see if he's well enough mentally to kill him because that's what they're all about. Uh, the other bit of good news to share is that for the first time, and I put a link about this in the in the chat on the Facebook page, for the first time since 1989, we have the smallest death row population uh, since 1989, uh, now at uh, 2,262 people, according to the NAACP Legal Defense Fund uh, and, uh, several times a year, they do this survey, which is now actually conducted by Rob Dunham from the Death Penalty Policy Project. And, and Rob notes, among other things, that the U.S. death bill is down 101 people between October 1st of 22 and, and October 1st, 23. So that's a 4.3% one, um, uh, one-year drop and down more than 39% from its peak of 3,717 people awaiting their executions in July of 2001. Uh, the largest death row declines came in jurisdictions with execution moratoria, where they've actually got governors saying we're not going to have executions, uh, so California, Pennsylvania, um, and, of course, the federal death row. Uh, those three account for 35.5% of those on death rows across the country, but 50% of the decline. So, yeah, there's a lot more that you can read about on Rob's Substack, and I put that link in the in the comments on the Facebook page. I do want to express condolences to our friend Delia Perez Meyer and her family. Delia's brother, the innocent Luis Castro, uh, died on death row. Well, I think he was in the hospital, but he's been on death row for a long time, proclaiming his innocence all along. And in the past week, he passed away after uh, some long illness. So our condolences go out to Delia and to everybody that's friends and Lewis on death row. Um, now we're getting into the bad news here. Uh, we've got, uh, I just want to note, I know we're talking mostly about the United States, but in Iran, they are just on a terror. I saw one, one group that deals with that says that they've been executing one person on average every six hours for the last couple of weeks. And Hello? Is Abe still there? I know. I think Abe's gone. Yeah, I think it was on his end that it happened, if I'm not mistaken. Then I accidentally hung up on Carmela trying to get rid of the... I, I think you did, David. I know. I'm sorry, Carmela. Please call back. <laughs> Abe, you got some time left. If you call back, I don't know what happened. I... I I, it was on his. He was still on, and we were trying to unlock him so he could call back, but I ended up accidentally doing Carmela. Yeah, you know, you, you don't like me. You don't like me. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't. <laughs> well, I didn't turn the mic off fast enough, did I? And now. <laughs> oh, it, it, comedy of errors. Comedy of errors, right? Yeah. So. Let me. I guess you need to finish the death row report. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, interesting enough, what um, I think uh, Linda and I were speaking tonight uh, at dinner that we found it interesting that, wait, I think this may be Abe calling back. Maybe. Mayhaps. 
Maybe not. Anyway, um, we were talking tonight at dinner that, as I'm sure everyone heard, uh, Governor Abbott uh, pardoned, yeah, pardoned Daniel Perry, uh, who was convicted of the um, shooting that killed the Black Lives Matter protester. So he pardoned him, and within an hour, Daniel Perry walked out of prison within an hour of being pardoned. I used a bad word whenever I heard that. Yeah, I think all of us were like, <laughs> Real? yeah, we, we, yeah, it was. <laughs> anyway, so what we were talking about is that it, you know, for s some of our friends, people that we've known in the past, people we've heard of, it takes forever for an innocent person to walk out of prison, even after they know that they're innocent. It takes forever. The paperwork, the, you know, this judge has to sign this, this person has to sign this. Now, granted, probably they knew it was coming. They knew Abbott was going to do it. However, within an hour, within an hour, I'm, I'm still like, really? <laughs> yeah, I was at work just throwing these cuss words left and right. I'm like, yeah, yeah. So, um, and we know we've heard the horror stories about uh, one of our, my friends named Ryan. He knows someone down in, um, uh, at the Stevenson unit. He was paroled. They gave, um, he had to go through a program. They gave him a bogus case. Then, his parole got revoked, revoked. They revoked his parole the day he was supposed to get out. Then they kept shipping him around the state, around the state. He kept going around the state. Finally, when he landed at a prison, he filed a grievance on that, and it was overturned. His case was overturned. So he made parole originally, caught a bogus case. It was overturned. And they are still holding him right now. He's still in prison. I mean, <laughs> but Daniel Perry was out within an hour. Said he also got his gun rights restored. Yes. Yes. Ain't that some... Mm. They said that Abbott was actually pressured by Tucker Carlson. Fox News. I am so shocked. So the story deepened. <laughs> I am so shocked. Pressured. Pressured my... Mm. It says Abbott had faced pressure to issue the pardon from white right-wing conservatives, including then Fox News host Tucker Carlson. <laughs> yeah, okay. Abbott... Abbott uh, they're trying to say it was self-defense. Yeah, I know, I know what they're trying to say, but when you look at everything, what the jury saw, you know what? Every time we're at an execution, we protest, we try to get Abbott to save the person. And usually the comment is we're going by what the jury says. Well, Abbott, you just pardoned someone Less than a year ago, or right out a year ago, he was found guilty by a jury of his peers. Yet you, uh, I'm still, yeah, you know, I shouldn't be shocked. I'm just a little bit more perturbed. <laughs> I, would, I would like to use another word, but David said, I can't use those words on the air. <laughs> All right, Abe is back, back on. Abe. No, but it's happened again. What um, uh, I don't know what I was saying when I when I when I cut off, but um, I know my time's probably already up. I just wanted to check back and say I'm sorry about that. What happened there? Um, well, we're but, sorry too. We don't know what happened. It looks like we might be well, having well, well, technical difficulties I, what, or something. What, what, what was I saying when I when you lost me? I don't. I, I've 
I forgot where I was, was cut- I ran. Okay, it's all right. I was cutting through all the executions. I, I, again, check your check the deathpenaltyaction.org. That's where you can find the petitions. We need to get a new one up for. Uh, I think we just got one up for Arthur Burton, who has a new date in Texas on, this, on uh, August seventh, and then of course. Uh, uh, um, the new date that was announced today in Oklahoma with uh, Richard Rosham. There's so much more we could talk about, but I know my time is probably up. So, again, uh, our address is P.O. Box 89 in Ghent, G-H-E-N-T, New York, 12075. And, um, and just if you watch our social media, so we can catch all these updates. And, and, and also, again, um, just uh, everybody stay safe. And don't forget, go to kpft.org and make a donation, uh, whatever is possible. Uh, that's what they need. So everybody have a great weekend. You too, Abe. Thank you. Uh, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Go straight into the ID. You're listening to KPFT Houston. Support for KPFT and the prison show is provided by the Cohen Parole Law Team. For almost 40 years, Gary Cohen has helped to represent incarcerated individuals throughout Texas, obtain parole, and fight parole revocations. We protect those who have fallen short of perfection from the wrath of those who believe they have attained it. More information about Gary Cohen and his associates, Alan Bennett and Gene Anthus, can be found on their website at parolelaw.com. You may also contact them at 512-476-6201. All right, and we are back, and let's go on over to Captain Tom on line three. Hey, Captain Tom. Hello, Danny. How are you? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm not very happy. Why? Because they released that idiot out of prison. Yeah, (laughs) I don't think many of us are. Uh, by the way, Daniel Perry was a staff sergeant in the United States Army. He is a veteran. And the Black Lives protester he shot was U.S. Air Force veteran. Also, uh, I think that was wrong. Uh, definitely, definitely, no. If they restored his gun rights, they, they, they just let a, a maniac go. Uh, that's all there is to it. I mean, he, he, he rode, drives his car through a crowd, okay, and he carried AK-47, and then he goes up to a, a, a human being's car, no matter what color it is, color you are, you know, and shoots him. You know, that, that's wrong. That, that's, that's definitely wrong. And they're saying, and, and David said he was self-defense, right? Yes. That's what they're saying. They're, that's what they're claiming. Well, uh, it's wrong. Yeah. It's, it's definitely w- wasn't wrong. Wasn't there video? Okay. Yeah. yeah. There was a video. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I don't think it was right. And I know a lot of other people, you know, and it's going to be a racial issue. Because uh, a lot of things that were said uh, in the courtroom, you know, calling people, you know, names and, I mean, yeah, uh uh-uh. Anyway, I wanted to to give my shout-outs to my incarcerated veterans. I don't have my list in front of me, but I'm going to have to update my list. Also, uh, if you, you don't mind my pitch, do you? Absolutely not. All right. Well, you can donate to KPFT by going to kpft.org or call 713-526-5738 or text the word GIVE to 713-526-5738. And also, you can become a sustainer. $5 a month, $10 a month, $15 a month, or $25 a month. And we have all kinds of Nice gift for you if you give a donation and you donate to the prison show. 
make sure you donate to the prison show because if you don't, if you don't, you know, we can't keep the prison show on the air. So, I'm Captain Tom, and I hope everybody's okay. Is uh, your power restored yet? Well, uh, mine is. David does not have power, and we have our friend Brandy here. Brandy, do you have power? She does, and uh, but her friends have been out of power. Linda has power, so how about you, Tom? Yeah, I got my power restored uh, last night, or actually early this morning. Uh, but uh, we got trees down all everywhere here in Baytown, and uh, neighborhoods are, and people are just stuck. And there's still a lot of power uh, outage over here. In neighborhoods, and uh, our prayers go out to the people that that were killed during that storm. There were five, a total of five people. It's seven, na- seven now. Oh, oh, it's up to seven now. Yeah. Wow, wow. Okay, well, David, uh, hope you get your power back on, buddy. Technically, it is on. Right before we oh, come up here, yep. Okay. I had generators well, running, and we had to unplug generators, and I scratched my floor, put my refrigerator back in the hole, but that's that's small stuff compared to everybody else. Yeah, I understand. You get any flooding up there again? No, we're we're on a hill, so all the water runs off pretty fast. Okay. All right. Well, I love you all. Take care of yourself. And I'll be back live next week right here at KPFT. Thank you, Tom. And we just, uh, Brandy just let us know that there's 600,000 plus still without power in this area. That That's a lot of people. A lot of people. Most of them in Jersey Village. Most of them in Jersey Village. All right. Now we have Nadine on line one. Hey, <laughs> Hey, Nadine. Hello, Danny. I just learned about what happened there, uh, and it's caring. I see the pictures on the news. It's caring. It's caring. Wow. So yeah. I want to, to send my shout out, my love to all of you in Kappa FT, and you are courageous, you know, to come to make the program, even if you are, you know. Well, anyway... Good evening there, guys. Shout out to my lovely husband, Eugene Broxton. Hey, boo, I did it. I get out of the hospital at 2 p.m. today. So I was so, so happy to be back home. Trust me. The sad thing is I am under insulin now due to this damn, damn chemo. chemo. Um and what the chemo has done to my body. So I will stop forever. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, he, the doctor, the doctor for, he, you know, I, I told my story to the doctor because he, he asked me if I have um, problems actually, and uh, I tell you your story. So before leaving, I was having three wonderful nurses in my room asking me about you. Well, we are doing anyway to welcome you in here. Um, so I want to send a shout out now to my friends, uh, uh, Chong Tong, Big White, Ali, Spider, Kenneth Porter, Thomas Millerell, and you, Tony Ford, soon, soon, soon you will get some letters from Italy, okay? So let me know. I will be back to my Fabulous, Abby, telling you that the good news I was waiting for from the state arrived today in my mailbox. So you can relax now and smile. The best medicine for me is your voice on the phone. It's better than anything, trust me. It was so, so great to have you um, on the phone. I love you, boo-boo. I really do. Bye-bye, my love. Thank you, Capacity, and I send, you know, 
my love to all of you. Of you. Okay? Bye-bye. Bye, Nadine. Have a great weekend. Thanks. Oh. <laughs> Quick drum girl. <laughs> yeah. And big thank you to Linda for her donation. Thank you, Linda. And now we have Miss Shirley. Hi, how are you doing? Doing good. How are you doing, Miss Shirley? Just, just fine. I was calling to do a shout out to Blaine. He also wanted me to tell you, uh, thank you for those pictures. Oh, and, and I thank you for sending them to me, too, with his silly self. I know, Goofy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's a mess. Yeah, he is. Well, I thought he told me he's going to come home and whip me. I said, well, you better hurry up. <laughs> What's taking you so long? <laughs> exactly. Right. You know, I'll give a shout-out to him and tell him I hope he enjoyed his movies tonight. They may still be watching them. I don't know what time they shut them off, but hopefully he enjoyed them. Everybody else did. And uh, I love you, Blaine. You hold your head up, and we all pray. Pray for everybody back there. And uh, I'm going to tell everybody hello back there. And uh, Big Wheel, Mark, Eric, Mayo, Beto, and Mr. Rodrigo. <laughs> I was waiting for I that hope one. Y'all have, <laughs> hope y'all all have a good night and everybody else back there. And uh, sweet dreams. And Blaine, I love you so much. And everybody says hi. And uh, hopefully I'll talk to you tomorrow. And I have a question, Danny. Okay. Is, uh, is the Tennessee colony, is it said? Is it what? Is it a federal prison? Oh, uh, not that I'm aware of. I think there may be one around there, but no, it's not. Oh, okay. I just want to know somebody that was sent there, and they usually send them to the feds, so I was wondering. Oh, now there there may be one around there. Yeah, I think I don't remember seeing any when my husband went out there and worked, seeing others, but I guess they built them out there. Since he's been out there, that's a long time ago. Because well, I've seen some whenever I looked it up. Oh, okay. The Caulfield unit. Some other unit, too. Yeah, there's a, but I was, there's I, a few. Yeah. So I was curious about that. Well, I can see. definitely look it up for you tomorrow, Miss Shirley. I can look up the name. Okay. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. You have a great weekend. You too. Y'all have a good one. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. All right. Now we have Miss Lydia. Hi there, Danny. How are you tonight? Doing good. How about you? I'm doing good. Doing good. It's a beautiful evening here. In the valley, it cooled down some. We got a little bit of rain this morning, a little bit. Nothing compared to Houston. <laughs> but, uh, good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. But uh, I'm going to give a shout-out to my son. Um, I, I uh, was talking, and I was talking when you called me, Ho, and I, I, I remembered that cuts off at 8 o'clock. But... Uh, so I was telling you that it got dark here too today, like at around eight o'clock it got dark and it rained, but it was a good rain, nothing no, no storm um but we did get some rain much needed rain here in the valley in this area here um and it was nice, so it's cooled down. We're in the eighties, I think right now, so it's a pretty night is the not much going on. Uh, I know Andrea's up in Las Vegas. The girls are with Tina and Mike's in town. And Tia Rosa did make it to that funeral this morning. Um, but other than that, uh, Tia Patty and Theo Jr., I don't think they're back yet. I haven't seen Theo Jr.'s truck. I think they're still out 
eating somewhere. Or I should say drinking, not eating at this time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, were out at a, they were out at a wind place, my brother and my sister, but they're not back yet, so they must be out drinking, not, not eating. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, but we're all good, Mijo. Everybody's good. I spoke with Tia early. I was going to call Tia Gracie right now because she was coming in from Houston. Uh, she was out there since yesterday, and she said she walked out of the hospital, noticed the streets were empty, and then she found out there was a tornado warning up in, up at uh, MD Anderson. But uh, they were driving back today. I, I was going to call her, and I forgot to see if she's home already. But I'm sure she is because they were leaving Houston at around 2 o'clock this afternoon. Este, Tio Juan was up there uh, for blood work. Este, but that's about it, mijo. Give me a buzz tomorrow. I should be here not doing much. Okay? I love you and I miss you. And I want to wish uh, a happy belated birthday to Rudy. I know he doesn't listen, but... If you. Close to Rudy, just tell him that Livia wishes him a happy belated birthday, okay? And I want to send my saludos to the guys. You know who you are. You're always thought of and in my prayers. Okay, good night, Linda. Good night, Danny and David. And be careful driving out there. Good night, Miss Lydia. Thank you. That, okay, with all that debris out there, take care, okay? All right. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right. Now we have Miss Caitlin. This is a shout out for Bethel Garza and Polonsky. Hey, boo. How are you? I hope that you're in good health, spirits, staying safe, and that there's a smile on your handsome face. As for me, all is good. I am literally just home from work. And yeah, you can hear Daytona. Yes, she is doing her river dance. Uh, just over, just over. And here she is. Yeah, as you can hear, she was doing her river dance that time. And I think she's saying hello to you as well. Um, yeah, uh, work was going good. Yeah, had a good day. No problems. Everything chilled out and relaxed, which is always good. And yeah, the sun is shining. So, yay, um, buddy, else is also good. So, yep, I'll let you go uh, now, and so please stay safe. Know that you mean the world to me, and thank you for sharing your life with me. So, good night, sweet dreams, and stay safe. And to everybody at the prison show, a big, big thank you for making this happen. She's always so nice. And a positive. Yes. Very. All right. So let's pitch real quick. Oh, joy. We, You know, we've had all of us here at the prison show um, have been donating. Linda donated. I donated. Brandy donated. And, you know, if we're going to do it, Danny's a sustainer. So, <laughs> But Lin you. Linda became a, a, a sustainer again tonight. And so did Brandy. So we're all doubling up and donating, and last week, Brandy made, well, we did. Yeah, well, I'm glad. So, and last week, Elizabeth became a sustainer again. It re, She let it, what do you call it, turn over or whatever, go another year. So, I mean, that's a good thing, but that's what our goal is, is if we all become sustainers, then we don't have to do this pitching stuff anymore. We don't have to have the pledge drive we can just have our show and go on with life, and everybody knows it's listener-sponsored radio. So we all just do our part and get on with it. And I know I say this all the time, but Ray said it the best. Ray said it's like subscribing to a magazine. We don't charge you for the magazine. You can read it if you want to read it. Just tune in to us. Make a shout-out. Call us up. That's okay. That's, that's what we're here for. But it's much better when you subscribe to the magazine because it makes it yours. You take possession of it. This is your show. We want to be here for you. We want to take care of your loved ones. We want to get the news out. We want to make sure that you get your message across. The wire, there's a lot of times it's the only way to make the message. I mean, to get the message across. I know they got the tablets and all the different stuff, 
But it's just so much better whenever, and I've been there and done that. You're laying up in the bunk. It, you're trying not to get involved with everything that's going on in the day room. Everybody's slamming dominoes, and it's all loud, and you're laid up in the bunk, and you got your headphones on, and you can listen to your loved one. It means so much more. So you all call 713-526-5738, option number one, or go to kpft.org. Hit the drop-down menu. Either which way you do it, make sure you go to The Prison Show. Or Dee Dee tells me it's The the Prison Show. It's good evening. Hope you are fine and well, everybody. Wish you a blessed and great weekend. And this is my shout-out for my sweet and precious and beloved husband, Robert Robertson. Polanski unit. Hey, 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 and hello, baby. How are you doing? I do hope and pray that you are doing good and well. As for me, I'm all right so far. I'm okay. I came back from work now, and I thought that I want to send a record to my baby to say hi and that I love you, that I want you and need you and that I love you baby with all of my heart, always and forever and ever. Well, my move is in progress, it's going on. Um, with every day I feel better, I'm good and I'm looking forward to be there. I will give you all the information you need if I'm at the seaside and then we will see what's going on. Well, baby, please check your um, stamps. I want you to know that I received your sweet and caring and loving e-message from this morning. I sent you uh, another one that's with information. It's a new article about your case, baby. It's from Gretchen. And I thought that I want to uh, share it with you. My love, you know that I miss you and I love you bunches and bunches. I wish that I could take you in my arms and never let you go nowhere my love and I do hope and pray that it will work that I can come to visit you I will let you know what's going on with how I said I'm great every day is better I'm closer to you to my move and I'm really happy about it I'll let you know everything what you need. Okay, my love. Baby, I want you to know that you are my one and only. The one and only man in my life. The only one I love and I want. I will never give up on you. And I will never leave you, baby. I'm by your side, no matter what. I'm always there for you. And let me know if you need something, baby. Then I will try to give it to you. You are the one and only, baby. My big, big, true, great love of my life. My dream husband, my Robert, my Bobby. Well, baby, good night. Sweet and blessed dreams to you. And say all the people they write on the card thank you thank you thank you love you baby thousands of kisses and hugs and i'm thinking about you baby may god bless you good night all right now we have stacy This is to my husband's sporty black at Wainwright unit. Hey, baby love, how's the day been for you? It's just another overcast rainy day here. 
where I'm at, boo. It looks like it's going to be one of those soaked kind of seasons. Anyway, we'll see. I've been on the machine placing in draft the VP Enough is Enough. Yeah, I didn't publish it, um, but I'll do that this weekend. I just published in draft. I sent you an e-note just then, sending you the Lions and Wolverine schedule, along with PJ's picture. Yeah, I thought you got it already, because you got her book. Anyway, I'm getting ready to send you the AP Post, uh, the New York Post, so you'll have three outstanding e-notes coming your way the next week. The girls are behaving. Moms came by just then with the food. Yeah, uh, we'll keep some and then do donate the rest. Baby, this is kissing you all as well, and I can't wait to hear your voice tonight. Yeah, the tuck you in voice. <laughs> I love you so much. I love you with all my being and heart and soul. Stay focused and tough. I'm yours. Mwah. Take care, sweetheart. Mwah. I love you, boo. All right, now we have Freddie. I guess we don't. I guess not, we don't. Not sure what happened to Freddie. Yep. All right. So uh, this week, or end of last week, this week, Carrie uh, Blackinger, the reporter, sent me word that her and um, Mr. Tony also sent me uh, word that the article that she wrote not too long ago uh, about Dungeons and Dragons, a story about um, them playing uh, Dungeons and Dragons on death row. And, and of course, they play it in general population also and in SEG. Uh, Billy Wardlow and Tony Ford, the article was specific about them. It won... Uh, and I didn't print out the article. It was a New York uh, award, and it was up for a Pulitzer Prize. And I am so very proud of Carrie, and I know Tony is too, and I know Billy is. So congratulations Carrie and if you're in touch with her definitely drop her a big congratulations because she really worked hard on that article uh, I know I turned over all of Billy's um, d d stuff to her right after his execution in 2020 so she's been working on that article for quite some time so congratulations Carrie and now we have Freddie back on the line. Hey, Freddie. Hey. Hi. Let me shout out my brothers at uh, the Wallace Pack, uh, James Dudley, and all you guys up in there, man. I don't know who's left in there, but uh, all you guys behind the steel curtain, wherever you're at, uh, shout out to everybody. I don't know your name, but hey, I support y'all. And uh, got to keep on going. Uh, everything's going on pretty good. I got my new apartment today, and uh, I'm single now, so life's gonna get better. And uh, just keep your head up, guys. That's all we can do. Keep your head up and be ready for when you come out of here. Bring it work, storms, and all that. So, uh, what can I say, man? Uh, on the, on the 16th of April, I've been out three solid years, man. So, hey, that's a big, that's a big improvement for me. <clears throat> and, uh, like I said, everything's going on pretty good. Uh, I'm still not able to work. I got disabled by that accident, that forklift back then. So now I gotta see, uh, a lot of doctors. But anyway, guys, y'all keep your head up, man, and y'all pray for me, man, and uh, what can I say, man? Just keep going. Bye, guys. Have a good weekend, Freddie. 
I will do that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Lupe on line two. Yes, hi. Hi, Lupe. Hello, thank you. Hi, thank you so much for making this possible. Uh, my shout out is for Isidro de la Cruz in the Polanski unit. And I just wanted to say uh, hi and uh, letting you know that I pray for you every single day. Wanted to let you know that everybody's doing fine. Uh, I've had some communication. And uh, with the family and everybody's doing good. I did talk to or message with your mom the other day. Uh, she's been working a lot outside, planting, planting her garden, etc. And we had a nice conversation over the phone, texting. <laughs> but anyway, just wanted to do a shout out for Isidro and say hello. Thank you all very much. And y'all have a wonderful weekend. You too. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. And you got shout outs to make? I do, but I was going to ask Linda if she wanted to do some. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll do my shout outs. And I can't keep this thing on my head, it keeps falling off. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> Okay, I want to say hello to Joel White, Michael Moyers, Thomas Miller L., Paul DeVoe, William Owen Sr., Jaime Cole, Franklin Davis, Will Spear, Cedric Marks, Robert Satterfield, Robert Solis, Lucky Ward, Ronald Haskell, William Hudson, Juan Balderas, Blaine Milam, Paul Story, Walter Sorto, Robert Roberson, Britt Ripkowski, Charles Hill, Dwayne Buck, Tyrone Williams, Iron Thunderhorse, Curtis Robertson, Stephen Curry, Eugene Broxton, Marcus Drury, Troy Glover, Bill Sims, Paper Cup at the Estelle Unit, Midget Titan at the Estelle Unit, and Gregory Allen at the Die Ball Unit. Just want to say hello to everybody. And I got a call from an inmate today <laughs> that said that um, I'm supposed to give Danny and myself a shout out because the guys at the Polunsky Unit love me and love her. But I don't know if that's true. That's just what the guy said. <laughs> well, so, it wasn't that nice. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that nice. I know. It was very nice. It made me feel good. But, you know, I know there's a, we have some haters out there, too. So No. <laughs> we do? No I way. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think do so. Do they like Snickers bars? Uh, <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to just keep on moving on that one. But I have some shout-outs. And a big hello to Rodrigo. How you doing, Rod Rodrigo? It was good to see you. Ah. Jeff, Brett, Eugene Broxton, Michael Ferguson, and, of course, one of my best friends, Farron. Hope you're able to hear this. Driver T, hey T, Big Head, Blaine, Mayo, Mayo, I hope you got my reply. <laughs> Oof. Uh, Leroy, Larry at the Huntsville Unit, Jay at Wynn Unit, Toot, Leroy, Leroy, oh my God, I already said Leo Willis and Joe Don, along with Chucky at the Win Unit. And of course, hey to Rex Alicious and CJ, along with Midget Titan and Paper Cup. Yes. And also, I wanted to, I don't think I said welcome to Brandy. Brandy has come the last couple weeks and she's going to be helping us and she's super excited and she needs to be close to a mic yeah grab that mic we can't hear her grab it <laughs> Hello, <y 'all. laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself well um so i spent a little bit of time um get close to that mic it's a 1970s mic you really got to get up there yeah all up in there get all up there <laughs> Um, 
Well, I have been out of prison now for yeah. almost 20 yeah. years. Uh, yeah, it was a um, long time ago. A lot of things have changed from what I understand. But uh, yeah, now I'm mom. I work for Live Nation. I um, yeah, have a boyfriend-ish. Just got into a little bit of a relationship very recently after five years. Uh, yeah, but I'm just happy to be here and you know do what I can for my part. Thank you for all your help. Yes, thank you very much. Very much. All right, we have Leslie on line one. Hello. Hello. I'm Leslie. I'm new to the, uh, I guess, the, um, what is it, the Prison Wives slash Fiancés Club. Um, and I just wanted to send a shout out to my fiance. His name is Patrick Wells at the Styles Unit. And Building 4, Block E, um, <laughs> uh, 14 Top. Anyways, I just wanted it's to say. Up there like that. That. I know that's right. He used to be in 49 Top, but anyway. Um, <laughs> They're beating on his bunk right now. <laughs> So anyways, I, we, we are going through like a little storm and, um, it's, it's just been like challenging. It's been very emotional and it's one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in my life. Um, I'm sorry. Oh no, it's okay. It's okay. Take your time. But, um. I just want him to know that I love him dearly, and um, I wish he would call me because right now he's pouting, and <laughs> yeah, because it's just all like a big confusion ball of, I don't know, just mixed emotions, I guess, um, and being involved with somebody that is incarcerated is very challenging because you don't know what they're doing and <laughs> trusting is very difficult because I've been down this road before. Um, and, um, I don't know. I, I believe Patrick is my soulmate and damn it. I'm confessing my love on this radio show. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I just wanted to let him know that, um, I, I love him, and I miss his voice tonight, and, um, uh, yeah, I feel like a complete idiot, but I am confessing my love on national, is it national radio or what? I'm, I'm new to this. So. It's almost international. We have people coming okay. from all over the world. Okay, well, I'm coming from Livingston, Texas. Um, it's just been a, re it's been a challenge because my car broke down, um, <laughs> It's, it's just been a challenge. So, but I just wanted to let him know that I love him. I'm here for him. Um, that's it. And he's in building four. I just want to say this building four, E block, cell 14 top. I guess it's 14. I, I don't know how they do it. But, anyways. <laughs> and what's his name again, Patrick? His, Patrick Dwayne Wells. Yes. So y'all go tell Patrick that Leslie loves him. Yeah, and everybody she, in the dorm yell, "Leslie loves you." You put his <laughs> entire government name out there, so we. I know that's right. So um, he's down to get that message. Uh, yeah, he's gonna get that message yep. because you know what? Hey, I know. I know someone mm -hmm. at the Styles Unit, and if he didn't get the message, I'm gonna make sure he gets the message. Yeah. Does he have a nickname? Jughead. 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 Y'all go tell Jughead. <laughs> Leslie's on the line. <laughs> yes. So As Ray I mean, would say, holler down the pipe, Chase, and rattle the bars. I know, that's right. We were just talking about the pipe, Chase, because his toilet kept on running and flushing. So I had to call up to the unit and say, hey, look, you know, it, you shouldn't have to fall asleep with the toilet flushing constantly. No. But anyways, yeah. I'm Sometimes just, the guards uh, walk by the pipe chase and they flush the commode just to funny. mess Some units don't have water at all, and then others are just wasting away. Uh, yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah. I, that's, it's, it's really sad. But anyways, 
this um, this road has been a very trying and difficult road to walk down. Um, but it, it's uh, does anybody have any advice to give me? Hang in there. Yeah, it gets. How long has he been in so far? Um, well, I mean, I came back into his life five years later. I saw him at the Harris County Jail, and, you know, I came back five years later. But it's like the – I'm just not a fool. That's what I, I'm going to be. I'm not going to be a fool. I'm not second best. But I'm trusting him blindly, but sometimes it's very difficult to trust. Yeah, well, that's the same way out here. But the problem is now y'all got distance between you. So it's not like I can just go to the main cave and you knock Mm -hmm. on my door. (laughs) And we pray together, you know. I mean, I don't, it's just been a very difficult. Well, if y'all are praying together, then you just need to sick the Holy Ghost on him. It'll be all right. (laughs) Yeah, I think he feels the same way about me because I'm a handful. (laughs) (laughs) Well,. I will say this. I know some, (laughs) not to put myself out there like this, but I know some tricks that you can, if there's, if there's hesitate, girl, you just need to hit me up on the prison show's Facebook and I'll, I'll chat at you. Okay. Okay. I mean, hey, my thing is if anything is in the dark, it will come to the light. So, absolutely, absolutely. You know, but I'm just not going to sit here and invest my time, my energy, you know. I, I care about him. I love him, but I'm nobody's fool. I am nobody's fool. No, ma'am. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well. And, it, and it's a problem because, you know, the mother has always put her two cents in. I don't know. I just want my car fixed so I can go pop up on his tail. Okay? <laughs> That's what I want to do. You're like, surprise. Uh, look at me. Maybe a good right? day. Right? Well. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, Patrick Dwayne Wells slash Jughead, I love you. And you need to call me tonight. Tonight, Patrick. Tonight. tonight. Jughead. <laughs> Well, <laughs> we hope you call back next Friday, Leslie. Oh, I will. I'll give you a, I'll give you a love story update. Thank you, because we're going to need it. We are going to yes. need it. <laughs> yes. I know I sound like a complete idiot being damn near 40, 50 years old, So, but it's okay. I just had to call and see about his love, and I just wanted to express my gratitude for him as well and I'm here it's been a difficult journey and I need some support here well you've got it you've got it okay like I said hit me up on the prison shows Facebook page and you'll give me some tips I will Yes, I will. All right. All right. All right, girl. We will hopefully hear from you next week. Good night, Leslie. All right. Good night. Bye. Bye. You better give her good advice. Don't tell her slap him upside the head or something. Would I do that? (laughs) I mean, would I? (laughs) Would I? (laughs) All right, Laura. Yes, ma'am. Hi, everybody. Hello, Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. It is my first time calling, so oh, wow. I'm excited. I'm nervous to be, I don't know if this is live radio, but I'm excited and I'm anxious to, you know, to speak and, you know, give my shout-outs to a loved one at a Ferguson unit. Well, you, this is live radio, so you can definitely give your shout-out to Ferguson. Just uh, give their nickname or their name. We just had a government name on the air, so you can do that, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, my loved one, which is my little baby brother, his name is Jason um, Alberto, uh, which is Alberto Roman. And um, I pretty much want to tell him that, you know, it's it's been, it's been hard these past few years because, you know, my brother's got a 25 sentence, and um, I just want to let him know that, 
every day we're constantly thinking about him. We're praying for him. And I deeply want to let him know that my parents are doing okay. Despite the fact that, you know, we had a very bad storm here in Houston. My parents have no electricity at the moment, but they're doing fine. And my brother knows that, you know, we stick together as a family. And I want to let him know that we love him very much. And we, you know, we're praying that we get to see him out in the free one day, you know. And um, we also want to let him know that his kids are doing great. You know, my brother has two kids. He has a 15-year-old daughter and I believe a 7-year-old boy, Andy and Amaya. And my parents have been doing a really good job, you know, keeping up with them despite the fact that, you know, they, you know, they've been separated from us. But my brother knows that my parents are doing their best to keep them around. And, you know, I know that my brother deeply misses them and he loves them. Um, but I, I do want to tell my brother that, you know, despite the mistakes that he, that he did in the past and despite the fact that he's here serving a sentence, you know, we want to let him know that we will always be here to support him and we, we love him no matter what. Um, so it is, you know, it's, it's been hard. It's been hard on everybody, but, um, I, you know, we are blessed to be able to talk to him on the phone. He does call us every now and then. And, you know, so we keep in contact, you know, and I pray that those phone calls keep coming in, you know, and we understand that, you know, during these lockdown seasons, you know, it's really hard for him to be able to communicate. But we know, you know, we just want to know that everything is doing okay. And, you know, we love him, you know, so I love my little brother and um, I want to tell him that I will always be here for him no matter what, you know, so it's, 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 you know, it's, it's hard being away from a loved one because I feel that, you know, there's this missing piece in this family puzzle that we have. And, you know, I tell my brother that, you know, I, I, you know, that, one day we will be re reunited and that puzzle will once be completed once he comes back home to us, you know. But we feel that, you know, till that day comes, you know, we we will always be we will always be there for him till the end. And we miss him a lot. Well, thank you, Laura. We appreciate that your call and we hope that you call back again next week. Yes. I, I I definitely will. Um, I happened to find out this from another friend, and thanks to her, I mean, I, I you know, I, I didn't get a chance to call in before, but, um, you know, I was, I was hesitant because I really didn't, you know, um, I'm very nervous at speaking out in public. You know, I know that I, I don't have anybody in front of me, right, but knowing that I'm live and um I would be happy to hear back from him to see if he's actually listening to this phone call. But, um, and then of course, I wish I really knew exactly where in Ferguson, but like I said, but I'm, I'm new to this. So I'm not sure exactly what his bunk or unit or cell he's at, but he's at Ferguson unit. So, but, um, his name is Jason Alberto Roman. So Jason, if you're listening to me, um, I want to let you know that we love you. We miss you, and we will always be here for you to support you till the end, you know, till you actually come home to us, you know, which, you know, hopefully, you know, that will be in the next few years, right? But I want to let you know that mom and dad are doing, are doing okay. Your kids are doing okay. I'm doing okay. We are, you know, we're, we're all hanging in there, you know, so we will be here, you know, and we're praying for you every single day. You know, so, but well, thank I you. want you to please know that we love you and we miss you and please, please hang in there. Thank you, Laura, and definitely call back next week. Yes, ma'am. Um, so, but do you know if they're listening right now or, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't know how this, how this I, works. I am or, not, yeah. I, I don't know if he's listening right now, but he could, he could definitely be, Yes.
Okay, okay. Well, once again, Jason, you know, this is your sister, Laura, you know, so please, you know, give us a call whenever you get a chance. Just keep those calls coming in. We are we are always happy to hear back from you, and I will definitely call back next Friday, and hopefully my parents are here so they can give a shout-out to you as well. So um, can they give a shout-out, or is it only one shout-out per? Now go ahead. Uh, it may... No, they can, I'm sorry? they can give shout-outs, too. Oh, okay, okay. And, and uh, just to and let you know, if he's not listening, yes, somebody sir. is, and they'll let him know. They'll go oh, okay. and say, hey, your, okay, your so sister's let's... on, you know, and then <laughs> that way next week he'll be listening for sure. Okay, okay, sounds good. Okay, so once again, his name is Jason Alberto Roman. Um, you know, um, but you know what? I do have a nickname, but I don't know if my brother would be happy for me to say it over the phone, but this <laughs> is a nickname that my parents call them, but... You know, um, it, I know he wouldn't mind, but um, the Spanish nickname that my parents named him was um, Sapito, Sapo. Um, so, Jason, if you're listening, I'm sorry, but, you know, this is what mom and dad, you know, gave you as a nickname. But this is just, uh, you know, this is, a, you know, a love nickname that they, you know, that they named you, but... All right, Jason, so if you're listening, please let me know. Otherwise, you know, if someone can pass on this message to him, and I'll definitely call back next Friday. And thank you so much for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, and we have Isabel. Uh, how y'all doing? Uh, doing good. We only have a few minutes left. You okay? Well, I'll say his name real quick. <laughs> his, name is, his name is Dwayne Robert Buck. He's my husband. Dwayne and Buck. Dwayne Robert Bellock. B-E-L-L-O-C. Oh, okay. All right. Uh-huh. And uh, I just wanted to know that uh, I miss him and that I, I wish he was here. And I know he will be at one point in time. And I just wanted to know that I, I am uh, on the, the – I watch y'all a lot. And he's always watching y'all on his tablet. He loves y'all a lot, too. So just let him – just hoping and praying that he hears me or that he knows somebody that will tell him uh, like it wor- usually works out. I sure do appreciate you guys. And may God bless all of y'all. Well, thank you. And what unit is he at? He's at All Red. An ad seg. All right. Well, thank you, Isabel, and we hope to hear from you next week, too. Oh, you sure will. Thank you so much, and you may all be blessed. Same to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And real quick, David, I Go wanted ahead. to remind everyone that next week it's going to get hot again. So, well, not again. It's been hot. But remember, according to policy, y'all are entitled to water at all times. They have to provide that to you. Ice, fans, and believe it or not, they are required to provide you cold showers in addition to the shower that you're supposed to have. I realize that they're not doing that. Most prisons are not providing a shower, but you are supposed to have showers and cold showers now that it's getting hot. And, of course, the respite areas. And those areas, if the unit is over 90 degrees, you are supposed to have that 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Or they're supposed to provide that to you. That's according to TDCJ policy, and I have this great graphic provided to us by Texas Prisons Alliance. Thank you much for that, because I've been carrying it with me everywhere I go. Cool. Cool. They do a lot for us. They do. Don't they have like two or three other groups now? Yes, and I'm a member of all of them. Yeah, well... I noticed the prison show was too, so tonight I was able to actually share the show on other groups. Yes. <laughs> TPA Styles, I guess, was one of them that sticks out in my brain. Yes. yes. So that's a good thing. So the more more we can share and the more uh, info we get, the more we can actually 
let the guys know what's happening. And I, I do know that Brittany was asking us about the tablets. She asked me about it well, tonight. I was just reading. Um, I mean, I, I would. Oh, you're talking about me getting a hold of Moises. Yes. So I sent him a message earlier today, but he didn't get back to me in time for the show. But did you see the article that was in the, what's that journal? That, that My phone's not working right for some reason. Is it when I need it, it doesn't want to work, right? Of course. That's what mine usually is. Um, the Texas Tribune had an okay. article four days ago about the tablets. Yes, I saw it. I posted it on the prison show. Oh. Well, I'm playing catch up. I work during the week, so, so I don't do have I. time to. <laughs> I don't have time to do it. Do you work on your computer, or do you? Are you in the field all the time, or? I, I'm mixture of both. Mixture of both. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I I don't have the privilege of having an office anymore, so I don't get to. I used to have an office and spend a lot of time on a computer, but now I'm in the field most of the time. I tried to take time today to get on a computer, but it didn't work out because of the storm. We ended up having to go to. I think we had like eight clubs where we had no power, trees all over the place in one of them. I mean, it was just a mess today. But uh, the tablets are big news, and I, I'm trying to get a hold of Moesis. And I don't want to say that they pulled the wool over our eyes. I, I would like to think that what happened was they meant, TDCJ meant well by it, but then all this bankruptcy stuff and everything hit. And maybe Moesis was telling this exact truth, and, and he's not allowed to, to get new content at the time. But I, I still think that we can get our feet in the door. Well, the some of the men are going on a I-60 writing campaign because they want us on the tablets. Yep. They also asked me if we should start a petition. So I wonder how many signatures we could actually get on a petition, and then we could actually go to them and say, hey, look. We have all these I-60s, and we have this giant petition with all these signatures on it, and we need to bust a move. Bust a move. Yeah. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> Yay. It's been a great show. Um, I got to do my little old spiel, though, because it's, it's almost time to go. You guys keep your heads up, and if you got a lot of bad weather where you're at, just, just stay dry. And, uh, you know, just keep your heads up. That's the best I can do um, because... You know, I, there was times I was listening to Marcy Marie, and there was times whenever I was inside, and I didn't ever believe I was going to get out. I just really found it hard to believe. And the truth of the matter is, most of you will get out. So just keep your heads up, and that day will come. Um, Brandy's a good example. I'm a good example. There's a lot of us. Hank, Hank's no longer around, but he's a great example. A lot of us have gotten out, and we didn't think we were getting going to get out. And a lot of us did a lot of time, too. So And stay out. And stay out. Yeah, make the next right decision. Freddie's having a, a hard time of it, but he's making through because he's making the next right decision. Absolutely. So sometimes you just got to buckle down and make that right decision. Even if it don't feel right, you make it anyway. And that's how you stay out. So you all keep your heads up and you'll get your chance too. I promise parole will be coming around. Um, in the meantime, you all stay tuned because we're going to have Rico Black, the DJ, uh, he's probably going to come in here in just a few minutes and surprise us, and we all got to hurry up and get out. We got to have a smooth transition because he's going to come in here and play some techno house music, and we'll be jamming. I'm in the truck tonight, so I can't get that station, but he'll be jamming and he'll be playing. <laughs> Last week he came in and he he had his his thing where you do the thing with the album. You know I what I'm saw talking about? That. Yeah, yeah. That. He cuts all his, he mixes all his own stuff. It's called a mixer, right? Yeah. He mixes all his own music right here and does all his own stuff. So you guys stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, we're going to get out of here with some uh, Charlie and the Regrets. Have a great weekend. Good night, y'all. Support for KPFT and the Prison Show is provided by the Cohen Parole Law Firm. For almost 40 years, Gary Cohen has helped represent incarcerated individuals throughout Texas obtain parole and fight parole revocations. We protect those who have fallen short of perfection from the wrath of those who believe they have attained it. For more information about Gary Cohen and his associates, Alan Bennett and Gene Anthes, you can find it at the website, parolelaw.com. You may also contact them at 
If you got home It's Friday night 